In this video, I'll demonstrate how to configure high availability in vSphere 7. And one of the important things that I want to note right up front is that we're creating an HA cluster. This is not vCenter high availability. That's a completely different feature. vSphere high availability provides high availability for all of your virtual machines. It's not specifically aimed at vCenter itself. So we're going to create an HA cluster. And the first step to do that is to actually create my cluster. So I'm just going to right click my folder here that my hosts are stored in and choose new cluster. And I'm just going to call it Rick HA cluster. And at the moment, I'm not even going to enable HA or vSAN or DRS. I'm just going to hit OK here. There's my cluster. And I'm going to drag these two ESXi hosts into that cluster. So that's what a cluster really is. It's a container object for multiple ESXi hosts. And so now I'm going to click on vSphere availability under configure. And we can note right now that vSphere HA is currently turned off. So let's fix that. I'm going to click on edit. And I'm going to enable vSphere HA by clicking this little slider here. And the first setting that pops up is, do I want to enable host monitoring? And so do I want to actually be able to monitor my ESXi hosts for things like failures or host isolation? So I definitely want that turned on. And now I'm going to start going through all of these little settings that I can configure. So first off, what do I want to do if one of the ESXi hosts in my cluster fails? Do I want to just not do anything and not respond to host failures? If so, I can choose disabled. Or I can choose to restart virtual machines. And that's how vSphere high availability works. If an ESXi host fails, HA is going to result in downtime. Virtual machines that are running on that given host, when it fails, they're all going to go down. So they're all going to fail, but they will then subsequently restart on other ESXi hosts in the cluster. So that's what I want to do in the event of a host failure. I want my virtual machines to be restarted on other ESXi hosts. And then by default, what is the virtual machine restart priority? So I can go with lowest, low, medium, high, and highest. Basically saying, in the event of a failure, which virtual machines should restart first? Well, by default, all virtual machines will be configured with a restart priority of medium. And so, they're all going to be basically equal. Now I may eventually take certain virtual machines and change that default restart priority on those specific VMs. But for now, any new virtual machine that gets created is going to have a default restart priority of medium. So let's assume that some of our VMs are set to medium. Some of our VMs are set to high. Some of our VMs are set to low. What's going to happen is the VMs with the high priority are going to boot first. And then the next group will start when the VM dependency restart condition is met. So what is the restart condition? Is it when resources are allocated for all of the VMs in the higher priority? Is it when the higher priority VMs are actually powered on? Is it when the higher priority VMs actually are sending VMware tools guest heartbeats? What's the dependency restart condition to move on to the next restart priority? So we're going to start with highest and then it's going to move on once those guest heartbeats are detected or maybe just once those VMs are powered on. Maybe then it'll move on to the next group. So I can configure that dependency restart condition there. And if I want to, I can even configure an additional delay before moving on to a lower priority VM restart. So those are the different host failure responses. How about host isolation responses? 
So if I have an ESXi host that appears to be functional, if the ESXi host still has access to storage, and the ESXi host is still powered on, but is isolated from the network, what should happen? Should the virtual machines on that host be left alone because the host is still running? Should the virtual machines on that host power off and be restarted on other ESXi hosts? We may want to go with that because if the host is isolated, those VMs may not be able to communicate with the network. Or do I want to more friendly manner shut down those VMs on the isolated host and restart them on other ESXi hosts? So I can choose the response for a host isolation situation here. What if we have a permanent device loss? So what if there is some kind of storage connectivity failure where a physical storage device has actually failed and sent a sense code saying this thing is down? Well, in that case, what do we want to have happen to the virtual machines on the host? Should the virtual machines continue to run on that host even though it's lost access to storage? Should the virtual machines on that host remain where they are, but will also issue an event? Or should the VMs on that host be powered off and rebooted on other ESXi hosts? These are decisions that you really have to make specific to your particular environment. Uh, the answer as to what exactly is going to make the most sense here depends on what you think is happening in your environment based on these conditions. Uh, very similar to a permanent device loss, is an all paths down condition. Again, this is a storage connectivity failure where our ESXi host is unable to communicate with storage systems. And in that case, we have similar options. Do we want to not do anything? Do we simply want to generate events? Will we power off VMs and reboot them if they are can be rebooted on another host? Or will we power off VMs aggressively? even if HA cannot detect the resources on other hosts. So those are our options with a all paths down condition. And then finally, virtual machine monitoring. Do we want to enable the monitoring of individual virtual machines? So for example, if a VM stops sending heartbeats using VMware tools, what should happen to that virtual machine? Should nothing happen? Should the virtual machine be reset on the same ESXi host if those heartbeats stop coming? Or do we want to not only monitor the virtual machine, but also turn on application heartbeats so we can monitor applications and potentially restart virtual machines based on that? So you can choose whether or not you want to enable individual virtual machine monitoring within your HA cluster or not. And those are some of the basic configuration options for an HA cluster.